So this time I want to talk about the grid and some quantized functions. The grid in Cubase is very versatile and has different modes. And like I said in my key commands video, you can turn it on and off by using the button J. If you select this drop down menu over here you can see the modes which the grid can offer you there is of course the normal grid and this will apply your snap function to your quantized setting or the bars and beats function so if you choose bars it will apply all the changes that you do bars beats will in my case be a 4-4 time measure so i have four possibilities in every bar and if i set my quantized pattern to eighth notes and set my grid to quantize i can move around all my different events or midi data in eighth notes so that would be the pretty normal grid function that you use all the time there is one more possibility which does combine the first three versions depending on how much I zoom in or out. So right now I have zoomed out pretty much and I can only use half notes. If I zoom out more I can only use bars and the more I zoom in the finer my grid settings become you can see new lines appeared and I can now use quarter notes and if I zoom in even more new lines appear I can now move in eight notes and now I can move in 16th notes. So the more I zoom in, the finer my grid gets, the more I zoom out, the, the rougher it is. But that is not all. The grid also has different modes. And these are really, really helpful if you want to arrange or edit or try different versions of your project or move events around and you have different ideas of what should happen. So let me explain. The relative grid, for example, works like this. Let's say my node does not or my event does not start exactly on the beat but a few milliseconds before it and I want to keep that. I don't want the grid to move the beginning of my event to the downbeat. So you can see there is a difference here and if I choose my normal grid and move it around, it will automatically set the beginning of my event to the bar, right now to the bar. But that is not what I want because now all my nodes are out of time. I want my grid to keep these few milliseconds before the bar. So in that case, 
I use the relative grid and now if I move my event around you can see no matter where I move it these few milliseconds in front of my beat or bar will always be the same so if I put it to another bar it will have the exact same distance in the beginning. This is especially helpful if you cut audio material and there was your note that begin a little bit early or you did make some cuts where you didn't use a grid at all. So for example if I deactivate my grid and I make a change like cutting somewhere or opening and closing events then it will probably not be exactly where it's supposed to be when I have my grid activated. So now there's a little difference and if I want to keep the difference because I like what I did before then I could use the relative grid and it will always apply the same change than it was before. The next mode is called events and that is also really cool. It helps you snap your events to other events. So at first this works of course on one track. So if you have one event here and another here and you want these two to snap together the events setting is right for you. But this not only works for events on one track, it also works for events on different tracks. So you see if I move this orange part and the beginning of this event is close, you can see it snaps to the beginning of this event. And it not only works for the beginning of events, it also works for the end of events. So if I move this, it will snap to the end of this event. So if your events are perfect in time or they mark the beginning or the end of an audio event or a MIDI event, then this is really a good setting because it will not leave any space between events so there won't be silence anywhere in your project. The next one is called shuffle and it rearranges the events you have on one track. It won't allow you to move events away. They're all snapped to each other. Now you see I have it colored different and now if I take this and move it away it will automatically put this event where the other one was before and vice versa. So if I put my green event to where the blue one is these two change their places. And if I put my orange one to the blue one the blue one and the green one get moved and the orange one is in the beginning. This is also very helpful if you have a lot of events 
in one track and you want to remove some of these but you don't want them to leave space in between so if you have your normal grid and you delete one there will be empty space but if you have your shuffle version and you delete one all the others will stay close together and the time will be removed that would be otherwise empty in between and the last one is snap to cursor line so wherever you put your cursor line if you take an event and move it close it will snap to the cursor line and that works for the end and the beginning of events and the last three is different combinations from these five above so set the snap function to grid and the cursor line or set it to events and the cursor line or set it to grid events and cursor line 